Hello my dear friends, you're in the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 7th of September of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the South Donetsk direction where the Russians continue offensive operation. We have one picture, new picture from this area and in this picture we can see several fire anomalies uh, from in the vicinity and between the villages like Shakhtarska, Novokrainka, Bogoyavlinka, Yasnopolyana, Oglidar. This picture can confirms that there are very heavy clashes right now, that the Russians are bombing and attacking the Ukraine positions and most likely within the next 24-48 hours the Russians will make another attempt to break through the Ukraine defense belt and to enter at least the village of Novo Ukrainka. In this video we can see how the Russians were bombing and attacked the village of Velika Novoselovka. The sources reported that the Russians destroyed the concentration of Ukrainian forces. Now let's move further and let's talk about the Dipakrovsk direction. First, we're going to talk about the southern part. We have already discussed in the previous video the current situation in this area. Most of the mappers have already adjusted the area around in the northern part of Krasnogorovka in Russian favor. In this video, we can see the Russian drone that was flying above the fields. We can see a smoke on the horizon. Most likely, this is the territory of Karlovka and uh, the Zhlana uh, Pirsha. And in this moment, we can see the Russian soldiers that were raising Russian flag right exactly in this point and based on this video once again most of the mappers have adjusted their maps including pre-Ukrainian sources the only difference is that some mappers uh, confirmed that this territory was also captured by the Russians some mappers are saying that this territory in is in the gray zone uh, as for neutral mappers, so today we got additional reports that the Russians managed to improve their positions in the northwestern part of Krasnogor of Kazov, and as a result of offensive operation, the Russians captured few more streets and few more buildings in the western direction. So something like this was captured by the Russians. Now let's move further and let's talk about the Ukrainsk, about the city of Ukrainsk. Uh, there are very heavy clashes right now. As you can see, we have a lot of very huge contested area. We still haven't received anything that can confirm the Russian presence in these areas, in these polygons. But let's move with the situation we have. And according to information that was published by pro-Ukrainian mappers and by neutral mappers, the Russians managed to improve their positions in the southern part of the village and in the eastern part. So, as you can see, currently there are very heavy clashes for the high-rise building area in the southern part of Ukrainsk, including the school number 13. And also, according to neutral mappers, the Russians answered the city of Ukrainsk from the east and the Russians managed to establish control over at least one high-rise building area this is the area building number 28 or 26 something like this so uh, the Russians uh, continue advancing uh, it's very important the Russians finally decided which city they are going to take under control or oh, we see that the Russians still haven't established complete control over Slidova furthermore during the previous few days we made a lot of changes in Ukrainian favor and as for Ukraines most likely the Russians will try to take the city under control because because there is a landfill, there is a terracon, and the Russians understand that they need to take under control the terracon as fast as possible. At seal, the Ukrainians managed to redeploy a significant number of reinforcement and stabilize the line of combat contact. As for Selidova, we have a lot of very interesting updates. Currently, there are very heavy clashes for the village of Mikhailovka. You know that during the previous few days, we've been re we have been changing a lot uh, the map in this area, mainly in Ukrainian favor. And but today we got another changes on the ground and. A According to neutral mappers, as a result of Russian offensive operation, the Russians managed to improve their positions uh, to the south of the landfill by the name of Karachenka. So this part, this part of Selidova along Mikhailovska Street was captured by the Russians during the previous uh, 24 48 hours. And this is very interesting and very weird. So of course we adjust the map according to reliable sources. We are keep we will keep this area as long as needed in contested area or until we get some geo locations that can confirm this but anyway uh, this situation is very interesting on the other hand, we continue receiving updates about very heavy clashes in the village in the western part of Mikhailovka. Today, the Ukrainian sources published a very long video of how they were fighting with the Russians uh, in the area of the bridge. And this bridge, as I understand, is very important and strategic position. Uh, both sides, either the Russians and the Ukrainians, try to control this. And But as for the current situation, we see that Ukrainians uh, control and have complete initiative in their hand. And that the Russians understand 
believe that f at least at this stage of the battle for Selidova, the Russians are not ready to move further in the western direction. As for the Russians, it's better for them to stabilize the situation for as long as possible, to take under control the landfills, to take under control Ukrainsk, and to repel upcoming Ukraine counteroffensive, and to deal as many as possible damage to the Ukrainians. So currently, this is the main purpose of the Russians: to stabilize the situation, to repel upcoming Ukraine counterattack, which is going to be an obviously this is going to be a very huge counterattack from the Ukrainian side. And one of the things that the Russians, uh, for example, did today, they destroyed the bridge. So we saw this bridge from almost every single video. We got a lot of videos from this area. And today the Russians made first attempt to destroy the bridge completely. If the Russians are able to destroy the bridge, then they will be able to block this situation, to block this area. And from this moment, the Ukrainians will not be able to move inside of the Russian part of Mikhailovka below the bridge and of course it will obviously reduce the pressure from the Ukrainian side. So as you can see there is a Russian attack but currently we don't know for sure whether the Russians managed to destroy the bridge by this attack or not but obviously we know that the Russians want this bridge to be destroyed. Furthermore in the part of Mikhailovka one Ukrainian tank was destroyed probably as a result of a grenade launcher attack or FPV drone attack. So currently this is the hottest point in this direction. The Ukrainians are trying to counterattack the Russian positions using these roads of attacks and if the Ukrainians are able to do this then there are going to be very big risk for the Russian group of forces who are currently trying to storm uh, the village of Ukrainsk because if Ukrainians are able to break the Russian defense and to restore control over Mikhailovka then Ukrainians will be able to counterattack the Russians in Memrik and then the Ukrainians will be able to counterattack the Russians in the village of Kalinova. So currently this is very important uh, positions Mikhailovka, the Russians most likely will not count losses, will not count resources, but they need to hold these positions as long as possible and it's better to repel every single Ukrainian attack. If they can do this, then they will be able to continue moving further in the direction of Ukrainsk and Girnik and Garnyak. Now let's move further and let's talk about Novogrodovka. We have just one geolocation from this area. Ukrainian FPV drone attack on Russian positions in the vicinity of the cemetery. Yet we haven't received anything that confirms Russian control over the village of Marinovka. We have adjusted the map, we have adjusted the territory uh, inside and around this village of Grodovka. And we have first video that confirms additional Russian progress and that the Russians have almost reached the river of Zhuravka. So very interesting video. In this video, we can see the movement of Ukrainian personnel carrier. The Ukrainians were moving very slowly because they were entering unknown and calling like, like simply enemy's territory. And as you can see, a few seconds ago, the Russians attacked the Ukrainian personnel carrier with grenade launcher from this building. And after, as a result of this attack, the uh, machine, the Ukrainian personnel carrier was broken and they were forced to stop. And of course, the Ukrainians realized that most likely they were ambushed by the Russians. As you can see, a few more more FPV drone attacks, uh, some probably grenades, some probably rifle shot. So the Ukrainians realized that we're encircled. They uh, left the uh, this carrier and then as soon as they left the personal carrier, the Russians began attacking the Ukrainians with FPV drones. And we will not continue watching this video because later the entire group was completely destroyed, including the personal carrier. So this video took place exactly in this point. You can recognize this long building. Uh, in the video, this is the building uh, on the right side of the video and this is the building on the map so everything geolocated correctly and uh, this building by the video according to the video was already captured by the Russians we are not uh, changing the color of this territory as well because the Ukrainians also were entering this territory because they thought that probably there were some Ukrainian soldiers and maybe they were ambushed by the Russian sabotage and reconnaissance group but obviously this video confirms that everything further in the southeastern in the eastern southeastern direction is already on the complete Russian control. Based on this video we have adjusted the map and we have reduced contested area. We have another very important video already from Ukrainian side of Zhuravka and in this video we can see the Ukrainian tank or personal carrier Bradley that was attacking the Russian forces that were located on the Russian side of, uh, um, of the river of Zhuravka and the, the Ukrainians landed some personal and as soon as they landed the personal the Russians began FPV droning the Ukrainians in this area and destroyed the entire group 
of Ukrainian soldiers. So this video confirms that most likely the Russians are very close to the river itself, the very close to this small bridge and who knows, maybe we should have colored a bit more territories than we have done, than we have colored. Now let's move further and now we are moving to Taryetsk, New York agglomeration. We have changed a uh, map in Ukrainian favor. As a reminder that during the previous few days, the Ukrainians, the 12th Azov Brigade, conducted counter-offensive operation with the purpose to unblock the Ukrainians, who were blocked by the Russians in the industrial zone in the central part in the heart of New York. And according to information we have, the 12th Azov uh, Purpose Special Brigade managed to do this. They managed to break through. And uh, today the Ukrainian sources published the video with the Ukrainian flag uh, above this building. So the video was geolocated. This is the building where the Ukrainians raised their Ukrainian flag and this video confirms that most likely the Ukrainians managed to reach this line so based on this video we have adjusted the map but uh, more almost every single military expert uh, confirms and think that most likely the Ukrainians will not be able to hold these territories for a very long time and basically the Ukrainians created uh, the um, corridor created the safe road for those Ukrainians who were encircled in this industrial zone so most likely maybe today maybe by the end of this weekend maybe by the end of the Monday, the Ukrainians will continue complete the evacuation and will abandon their positions and the Russians will take under control everything in this part of New York and Milipovka. But for now, there is a road, there is a positions of the armed forces of Ukraine, so this is the current situation. Now let's move to Chasov Yar and telling the truth, today uh, I analyzed uh, the videos and updates that have been receiving from, uh, the, from Chasov Yar for a very long period of time and uh, I made the few conclusions that I would like to share with you. First of all, as I understand the current situation on the ground, uh, that and if you follow mappers, different mappers like pro-Ukrainian neutral, you will see, you will understand that most likely the current configuration of the line of combat contact doesn't correlate, doesn't correspond with the reality, that the real situation is completely different. And mainly I'm talking about the northern part, about this territory. And I made this conclusion based on the videos that were published by the Russian sources during the previous week. So what we have received during the previous week. For example, in this video we can see the Ukrainian tank uh, that was uh, located somewhere in this part of Chesevyar on the intersections of roads and the Russians as a result of FPV drone attacked the Ukrainian tank and as soon as the Ukrainians were attacked by the Russians they began withdrawing their positions. In this video we can see the same story. The Ukrainian tank uh, or personal carrier was moving along the street and the Russians as a result of FPV drone attack managed either to destroy or to damage the tank and the Ukrainians were forced to fall back and to change their positions. So what is so special, what is so interesting in this video and what kind, kind of conclusions I came to? First of all, if you take a look at this video once again, if you have access to this map, you will see that both tanks, both personal carriers, both vehicles that were damaged by the Russian FPV drones were watching in the northern direction. So uh, this tank, this uh, tank that was located in this part of Chesevyar was looking to in the northern direction. So his uh, towel was watching to the north. And uh, this uh, uh, FPV drone, this tank that was located in this part was also watching in the northern direction as if they were expecting that the Russians are going to attack exactly through this area. So based on this videos based on these geolocations, I came to the conclusion that most likely the, the Russians managed to improve their position significantly on the Ukrainian side of Seversky Donetsk Donbass Canal and currently the Russians control something like this and most likely the Russians are going to continue their offensive operation inside of Chasovyar, not uh, through the east, not through the central part, not through this area as we used to think, as I used to think before, so this is not the main road of Russian attack that we are going to see in Chasovyar. Savyar. But as I understand, the Russians are going to continue moving to the west uh, in, Kalinov, in Kalinovka and they will try to attack this block. Uh, this is Desiata uh, block, this is Pivnichny block, this is um, uh, Nova Pivnichny block of the city of Chasavyar. And most likely the Russians are going to attack and going to conduct the final and the main attack in the direction of the city exactly through these roads. And most likely the Russians have already improved their position significantly. Je 
we just haven't received anything from this direction but I as i understand due to this dislocation that maybe the russians are already to the north of these ukrainian positions of these tanks and this is the reason why the ukrainians were watching in the northern direction and were expecting uh, the appearance of russian forces uh, and i'll remind you that during the previous few days we got a lot of geolocations that confirmed additional russian progress in in kalinovka we have some changes on the ground according to different mappers so everything is as i understand exactly like this so let's follow this situation obviously if uh, my version is correct most likely during the next few days we're going to receive additional updates and we will adjust the map of course in russian favor and we will color this northern part of chasavyar in russian uh, favor now let's move further let's talk about the severe direction the russians continue their offensive operation and we have changes on the ground um, uh, during the previous uh, according to the previous configuration of the line of combat contact this small salient used to be in contested area but today we got geolocations from the ukrainian side in this video we can see how the ukrainians were fpv droning the russians with a dragon fpv drone with toss uh, flamethrower drone and the ukrainians were uh, flamethrowering these positions of the armored force of the russian federation and based on this video we have adjusted this stronghold in russian favor this one and based on this video we have adjusted everything below also in russian favor as for siversk itself the russians continue bombing and attacking the stronghold and the russians uh, attack siversk with another fab 1500 in this video we can see the strike itself of fab 1500 and the consequences the entire building was almost reduced to ruins as a result of one bomb now let's move further as for the north in Kupin's direction during the previous 24 hours we start beginning a uh, beginning and um, achieving lots of videos uh, from the village of Glushovka and from the village of Kivsharovka. So uh, the Russians during the previous days managed to get very close to these two cities and now the Russians began bombing and attacking the Kivsharovka citadel. So in this video we can see how the Russians attack the north um, uh, eastern part of the citadel with FAP with FAP 1500 or maybe with FAP 500 uh, which means that the Russians are very close to the city itself and this is exactly the first target that the Russians will try to take under control because if the Russians are able to take the citadel under control then they will have a very perfect and very good positions a very good uh, strong foothold that can can be developed in the future in the northern in the uh, western and in the southwestern directions so according to to this geolocation we can make a conclusion that the russians most likely will try to attack in the direction of this stronghold as well so this is very important and very powerful position if the russians are able to take this territory under control now let's talk about uh, the kurs direction there are very heavy clashes we have some changes on the ground uh, the ukrainians during the previous 24 hours continue their encirclement operation now the ukrainians are focused to encircle the russians who are currently located in this uh, in the, in the villages between in the on the territory between the village of Nova Sarochina Stara Sarochina Mala Loknya, uh, these uh, small salient these fields and the Russians have a very short uh, let's say very small uh, supply road that they are using to support their forces and the Ukrainians are trying to encircle and to cut the Russians but uh, the Ukrainians during this process faced a lots of problems on their way and it seems that the Russians are preparing a trap for the ukrainians first of all the russians are bombing the ukrainians with everything they have uh, the russians are using total and travel systems the russians are using fabs there are no long-term uh, term uh, strongholds or defense positions the ukrainians are always on the ground they are always can be seen by the russians so which lead to significant losses just during their movements on the ground we have a lots of fpv drone attacks on ukraine artillery forces we have a lots of just regular uh let's say aviation strikes with fabs and then so on but the most important that one of the pincer was cut by the russians during the previous 24 hours the kings were trying to encircle the ukrainians uh, the russians from the northeastern direction but the russians conducted a counter-attack and as a result of russian counter-attack they managed to cut the ukrainian supply road uh, that was going between through the village of cherkaska parishna in the northern direction to the village of ruska parishna there is a bridge and the russians as i understand as a result of counter-attack managed to cut 
at this area and to encircle the Ukrainians who were located here. So we have geolocation that was uh, published by the Ukrainians. In this video, we can see a group of Russian soldier that soldiers that were moving along the city, along the village, uh, between buildings, uh, clearing and uh, for searching for the Ukrainians. Maybe this is additional reinforcement. Maybe this is something like rotation. Anyway, this video confirms complete control over this part of the village by the name of uh, Cherkaskaya Parishna by the Russian forces. And once again, if we return back to map, there is a river Suja and there is just one bridge and basically the Russians managed to take under control the street uh, that uh, later moves inside of the bridge and then further in direction of Ruska operation a very very bad situation for the Ukrainians now they need to think how to counter attack the Russians and how to restore their control over this territory and only after this they will be able to continue if the Russians are not able to take under control this pincer and to counter attack the Ukrainians so very difficult situation for both sides there are very heavy clashes these days are decisive for this direction and if the ukrainians are defeated of course then they will be forced to fall back probably until the border with russia as for Korinyeva itself, the Russians have already launched a series of counter-attacks, number of counter-attacks, and have already restored control uh, in the vicinity of the village by the name of Korinyeva. And the Ukrainians, when they uh, withdrew their positions, they began bombing and attacking the Russian edge positions. So, mm, not so perfect, not everything so perfect for the Ukrainians as Sirsky and Zelensky describe in their uh, interviews that they give to different media, world medias, everything is not so good more even furthermore the situation is getting worse and worse because significant number of forces that used to be in the Kursk direction the Ukrainians were forced to redeploy to the Pakrovsk area with the purpose to stabilize the situation and that's it for today military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye